This is Terry Dean, and in my recent Monthly Mentor Club issue, I talked about an advanced secret for saving up to 50% of your money when running retargeting ads. Now, retargeting is the most profitable type of paid advertising that you can run. Your ads are only shown to people who actually visited your website. And of course, you can choose specific pages on your website that you want to use for retargeting. But the problem is that the cookie your website hands out to visitors will go to all the visitors, including those who may only spend a second or two on your website. They click to your website, maybe it was a mistake when they clicked over, or they see that you're selling something on your website and they immediately click away. They're not really a good prospect for what you're selling. But what if you delayed the cookie for 15 seconds or more, making sure that they're truly interested in what you have to offer? That would mean that you'd build a smaller retargeting audience, but they'd be higher quality. It would cost you less money to advertise to them, but it's likely that they'll convert better than a general audience that includes the people who just clicked away from your website immediately. Now, there are some features built into some of the networks such as Facebook that allow you to select only the, the top like 25% of the visitors who spend the most time on your site. But what if you wanted to get more specific and cookie only those who were there for 15 seconds or more? And we'll specifically use 15 seconds in this video, but you could choose 30 seconds or even 45 seconds or longer. So let's dig into that and let's look at how we can do that because it's a little advanced technically of what we have to do to set this up. Now what I'm going to recommend that you use is that you use the Google Tag Manager. When you're setting up a lot of different retargeting networks and you have a lot of different codes in your website like a lot of like I do and a lot of my clients do, the Google Tag Manager just makes it easy to keep everything organized. So just real quickly, how do you set up Google Tag Manager? Well, first of all, you can sign up for Google Tag Manager for free over at Google. Just do a search for it and you'll find it real easy. You're gonna get a code when you go over there to Google Tag Manager, and it's just two simple codes you need to install on your website. On most of my websites, I use WordPress, and a lot of times I use Optimize Press for my site. So with Optimize Press, here's what I do in Google Tag Manager. I would grab this code and I would copy it, and then I would paste it inside of Optimize Press under the Optimize Press Dashboard Analytics and Tracking section. So I would just go here and I would paste in the head code here. And then to paste in the body code, all I do is just go back here again, copy and paste this code, and I would paste it into the Analytics and Tracking body code right here. And then I would just go in here and save it. And I already have it installed here on this site. And so I'd save the settings and Google Tag Manager is now installed on my WordPress blog. Now, I don't know what WordPress site or what content management system you might be using on your website. Depending on what you're using, you might install these codes in different places. The key is you really wanna install the Tag Manager throughout the entire site. And the reason I like this section is it when I put it here, it goes across the entire site no matter what pages I create. And many of WordPress themes have that ability that you can install this site-wide. If not, you can often do it by editing the theme header that you're using and the theme body pages. That gets a little bit more complicated, so I'm just showing this right here because I'm gonna show actually how we set it up and we do a timed tag. So for this example, now that I've got Google Tag Manager installed on the site, let's say that I want to create a Facebook pixel and I want it timed. I'm going to add it to my Google Tag Manager and I want to have it timed so it shows up after 15 seconds. Well, I'm going to jump over to Facebook and you can see there's several options. For one, it actually integrates directly with Google Tag Manager and you can use this to just directly integrate it. But I'm going to take the manually install your code yourself because you know you never know which tool you're using, which network you're hooking up with, and not all of them are going to integrate directly with Google Tag Manager. So I'm just gonna manually in install the code myself. And you don't have to worry about finding the header code because Google Tag Manager is gonna do that for us. We're gonna go down here, we're gonna copy the entire pixel code, and we're gonna go over to Google Tag Manager. And right here, we're gonna go over here to the left and hit Tags. You can see I already have Google Analytics installed on the site. I'm gonna click on New. And I'm just going to use a custom HTML here, and I'll drop their code in right here. So this is the basic code installed. Now I have to set up a trigger for when it's going to 
when this tag is going to go off. Now, the basic setup, if I wanted it to just load the moment anybody hits the page, right here, and it's done, and it's ready to go. And let's just save that so we can check and make sure it's working correctly. This is Facebook Pixel. Save it. And the nice feature in Google Tag Manager is you can actually preview a page and make sure the code's showing up the way it should. So I'm going to click on the preview section. Then I'm going to go over and visit one of the pages on this site. And you can see analytics file and the Facebook pixel fired on the site. Now let's go back over here. Let's go back over here and let's check and make sure that the it's tracking it in Facebook. Okay, you can see it's working. The tag is working, so we know it's working. At this moment, I'm not going to set up all the events on Facebook. We can do that on a different time. We're going to go back over here so we can see that it's working. It showed it in the little analytics, the analytics and Facebook fired. So currently, it's loading every time a page loads. But remember, we want to delay it by 15 seconds for this example. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to edit the trigger. I'm going to remove the all page views trigger. We're going to go over here, click the plus sign, and we're going to close a new trigger. I want a timer. So the timer is, notice this is in milliseconds, so one thousandth of a second. So if I want 15 seconds, I'll put in 15,000. I only want this to load one time, so I'm going to give it a limit of one. Enable this tr trigger when the page URL contains, we're just going to put the domain name here, the Terry Dean. So what I'm saying is, after 15 seconds, it's going to load when anybody's anywhere on the domain after 15 seconds. I'm going to add one, well, let's actually save this and then I'll show you another feature afterwards. So we're going to call this timer. Okay, so the timer, we're going to save this. You'll notice that I'm still in the previewing workspace. So let's refresh this since we're in preview and let's go over to the site and see how it works. Okay, you'll notice the analytics file, but Facebook Pixel hasn't fired yet. Let's wait 15 seconds. I'll pause the video and hit right before 15 seconds. There you go. You see it popped up. So that's after 15 seconds. Now the Facebook Pixel is playing. So that's how you can delay something in Google Tag Manager. Now we have a problem. The problem is that the same Facebook Pixel that I use to build my retargeting audiences is also used for my conversion tracking. And let's say that somebody opts into my list. That means that I might not count them as a conversion on the thank you page unless they spend 15 seconds there. So we're going to need to make another change to the Google Tag Manager. And see, this is why it's getting a little complicated as you follow along. But as you can see, we can check it all along the way. So let's go back into Google Tag Manager. We're going to make another change. So we're going to add another trigger here. All right. And the new trigger, we're going to choose a page view. Okay, some page views. Page URL contains the Terry Dean. So it's going to again work for anybody visiting anywhere on the domain. But I'm going to add another feature, referral. So this is going to be somebody who's referred by on the site. So in other words, if somebody's on the main page of theterrydean, Dot com and then they click any of my navigation or they opt into a box and they go to another page on my site they're going to be tracked immediately because you notice I'm not putting a timer on this one and we're just going to call this save as page view okay so we paved in it so we see got two that means that it could somebody could be counted twice though so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another edit to my timer because it currently loads for everybody but we're going to make a similar edit here now we're going to say that the referral does not contain the Terry Dean. So this means that the timer only operates if they come from any page that isn't on my domain. Okay, so if they're on my domain, if they go from one of my pages to another one of my pages, it's instant. If they come from anywhere else and come to my site, it'll take 15 seconds to load. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Now let's refresh. And let's check to see how this works. 
Let's type it in, the tyridine. Okay, you can see it hasn't loaded yet. It's gonna take 15 seconds to load, but what if I click up here to the free cheat sheets? Look, it loaded instantly. Click another page on the site. Loaded instantly. So as you can see, it's working exactly like it should. If somebody visits my website from anywhere else on the web, it's gonna take 15 seconds to load. If they visit another page on my same site, like they opted in to my list and they came to the thank you page, or they purchased a product and went over to the thank you page for the product, now it's gonna fire immediately so we can get the conversion tracking working correctly. That just shows a little bit of the power of using Google Tag Manager. I was slow to start using it, but now that I've seen its power and what you can do with it, it makes things so much easier to add and add to your site because you just add the code one time to your site and then you can make all the other changes inside of Google Tag Manager itself. Let's make sure that we finish this up and let's submit the changes that I made because I'd hate to forget to actually submit the changes that we just edited. Here, all you have to do is add a name just to remember the changes that you made. I'm gonna call Facebook Pixel Timer, and you can put a description so you know exactly what you did, and then you can publish it. So now it's working and it's live, but what we just did, and the Google Tag Manager would have hated for you to forget to do that step.